Hello, this is Chuck Ridgway, Automation Technology Manager at Horner. Thanks for joining us for another Tuesday live stream. Well, today we're going to tell you all about this guy. Here's our topic for today. The new Wi-Fi adapter generation two from Horner Automation. Now, it was just about a year ago, actually less than a year ago, last summer indeed, when we told you all about the first generation Wi-Fi adapter from Horner. And today we're going to compare that guy to this guy. And he may be little, but he's got some big changes that have resulted, we think, in a better overall product. So we're going to tell you all about that today. So without further introduction, let's dive right into the breakdown of today's topic. Okay, we're going to start by answering the question, what is the Horner Gen 2 Wi-Fi adapter? We're going to compare the first generation with this latest generation. We'll go through specifications, applications. We'll give you some installation tips. We'll tell you how to order because these are in stock at the factory. So you can get one pretty quickly to try out yourself. All right, here we go. All right, so what is the Horner Wi-Fi adapter? And we're currently in generation two, but our Wi-Fi adapters are cost-effective accessories, adding Wi-Fi capability to any modern OCS that has a full-sized USB-A port. Now you can see the part number there on the screen. And for the second generation product, we've just added a V2 to the end of the part number. Now you can use this with any OCS, including the X5, the XL series OCS from the XL4 on up, you can use it with any XL Prime unit and the upcoming Canvas units. Can't use it on the micro OCS in general because of the lack of a USB-A port, but the X5 does have support for that. Now, one of the great things about this product is that the adapter adds Wi-Fi capability to all of these products without impacting the existing wired capability of the OCS. So if you've got a single Ethernet model, like an XL4 Prime, for instance, you gain Wi-Fi capability without losing your wired capability. If you have a dual port model, like the XL7 Prime, for instance, you gain the Wi-Fi capability and keep the full functionality of both of your wired ports. So that's a great function for sure. Now let's compare it against its first generation counterpart. Now they're operationally identical, so that's great. So that means that anybody who's used the first generation unit, you can immediately start using the second generation unit really without any changes other than the way you install it. You know, the whole size is different, the installation's a little bit different, but other than that, operationally it's the same. The way it's configured in Seascape, the way the system menu works, all those things are identical. Now, the second generation unit is about a third smaller than the first generation. It's easier to install. Now, it is includes USB-C support. So the first generation unit supported USB-A on a molded cable. This version has a modular connection for the cable that is USB-C. And because this product is easier to manufacture, you're gonna find that it's more available with shorter lead times. As a matter of fact, we have them in stock now, so you can try one out right away if you wanna place an order. Okay, and because it's operationally identical, that means that all the demonstrations that we did last summer, all the configuration in Seascape, that entire video really that we did last summer is totally viable and totally current today. So we would encourage you after you see today's video that really shows off generation two, that if you're interested in seeing how does it configure, what are some demonstrations and functionality, maybe using WebMI, all those demonstrations that we did last year in that video, again, you can watch those at your convenience by going to our YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, I believe Emily placed a link to that video right in the description of today's video. So check that out for sure if you want more information. All right, now let's take a physical look at the hardware between the two units. All right, I'm here on the bench and I'm going to compare generation one and generation two Wi-Fi to USB adapters from Horner. All right, let's start with generation one. So this is a molded product. It's got a fairly sizable area here on top that is outside of the enclosure. And then it mounted in a hole that was more like a conduit sized hole. 
It included a threaded portion here and all the gaskets and nuts required to maintain a NEMA 4X type seal. All right, and it had a molded cable as well. So you didn't have your option of cable lengths. It came with about six feet of cable and you could lengthen it if necessary by adding an extension cable, but you couldn't shorten it, if you will. Still a nifty package, still very reliable. Still a lot of them out there working and will work for a number of years yet. Okay, but let's take a look at generation two now. And wow, there have been a lot of changes, quite a few improvements, I would say. For now, it really just looks like a 22 millimeter push button. The whole size is the same as a 22 millimeter push button. It uh, just tightens down with this integral nut here. It's gasketed so that it maintains the proper seal for NEMA 4X and IP65 type environments. And I think the, the feature that I like most of all is that it includes this modular cable connection that happens to be based around USB-C. Now it includes a two meter USB-C to USB-A cable, but you can really use whatever length cable that you want that you can purchase from you know, any retailer. It's just a standard USB-C to USB-A cable. Now in my installation, when I install it in my test panel, two meters was a little long. So I went ahead and purchased a half meter USB-C to USB-A cable. And there's nothing special about this cable. It doesn't have to be USB 3.1 or 3.2. Really, we're just talking about 72 megabits or so maximum. So a USB 2.0 rated cable even would be fine. So uh, a lot easier to find uh, the cable that you need that's just the right length for your installation. Now, let's take a peek inside here, even though this isn't something you would normally do uh, when you receive the unit, unless you're curious, like I, of course, am. And what we have here is a cap that screws on. Of course, it's installed at the factory. You can see it's gasketed here. And inside, there's the circuit board with the Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz radio and antenna installed on the circuit board. And it's not impacted by the material that it's housed in because it's non-metallic and doesn't really attenuate the signal at all. And as you can see, like I mentioned a minute ago, this is a gasketed cap. And I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it here. Of course, you would only, again, you'd only take this cap off if you're curious. You don't need to do that for installation. And uh, I think this is a very handy, very nice package. Not only is it probably, oh, I don't know, maybe a third smaller uh, than the original unit, but not that it matters much, but it's also considerably lighter as well. Okay, so this is the Generation 2 Wi-Fi to USB adapter from Horner Automation. All right, let's take a look at the specifications next. Now, the Wi-Fi radio that's embedded in the adapter is based on Wi-Fi 4, also known as Wireless N. This is a 2.4 gigahertz based unit with a maximum throughput of about 72 megabits per second. It utilizes WPA2 security, and it has a range up to 100 meters. And we think with this new design, we can take full advantage of that 100 meter maximum range. Of course, your installation is going to impact that as well. Now, the Wi-Fi adapter does not require any separate power connections. It's all powered from the OCS's USB-A port. Okay, now let's talk applications. There's two primary modes in which this unit is going to be utilized. The first, which I think is going to be the most popular, is called client mode. In client mode, the adapter allows your Horner OCS to log into an existing Wi-Fi network. So maybe you've got an application for building automation or on a campus, maybe agriculturally, maybe in a manufacturing facility. And in all of these cases, maybe they have a well-established, well-maintained Wi-Fi network available that you'd like the OCS to be able to log into and utilize. So that is a very common application when you're using the adapter in client mode. And again, I think that's gonna be a very popular way of utilizing this adapter. Now, another way you can utilize it is in access point mode. So in this case, the adapter is acting as its own access point 
where it's effectively providing a dedicated Wi-Fi network for the machine that allows up to eight devices to log into it. So in this scenario, maybe you would like to have a local Wi-Fi network for your machine so that when even when it's installed in your customer's facility, you don't have to depend on getting credentials from your customer. You can walk right up to the machine, start wireless troubleshooting over Seascape instead of having to you know, connect a wire up. You can use WebMI locally by the machine. That would be a good application for that. Again, another way to use this adapter is in access point mode. Okay, let's talk about the installation. Now, I've mentioned multiple times already that this really installs just like a 22 millimeter push button. So whatever punch you normally use, whatever cutout dimensions you normally use, if you have your panels laser cut, whatever drill bit you normally use, if you normally install a 22 millimeter push button, you would use the same approach for the adapter. Now it's gasketed, as we've mentioned, so it maintains IP65 and NEMA 4X, and you really want to mount it in a location where you can get good reception. So if you've got a metal enclosure, that probably means mounting it through the top of the metal enclosure to get it above all that metal to improve the reception. Or maybe you might wanna locate it a little bit remotely from the OCS. As long as you're within five meters, you can purchase a USB-A to USB-C cable from any retailer that would allow you to remote mount that wireless adapter. Um, or if you have a non-metallic enclosure, maybe the best answer is to install it on the top or the front or the side. Again, you have more flexibility with a non-metallic enclosure. But I would encourage you, if the standard two meter cable that's included with the adapter isn't ideal for your application, just purchase one of the proper length. It's just a standard cable, no reason not to do that. Okay, once again, all the details I did not cover today in terms of Seascape configuration and all the demonstrations and all those sorts of things, you can get that information from the video we did last summer. Just follow Emily's link in our description for this video or just do a Google search for our using the Horner Wi-Fi adapter video we did last summer. Okay, how do you order the Gen 2 Wi-Fi adapter? Well, of course, you can get it from your local distributor. It's a new product, but it was released with the May price list, so your local distributor will be able to source it for you. Or you can go to our web store at hornerautomation.com. You'll find it under products, control accessories, and Wi-Fi adapter. The part number is shown on the screen there, and it has a price of $179. Very inexpensive. I would get one today and just check it out in your environment. Do some wireless Seascape programming. Use WebMI with it. Again, as long as you have a Horner OCS that's modern, that has a USB-A port, you should be good to go. Okay, that wraps up our program for today. This is where I remind you that we're here every Tuesday at two o'clock, whether we're fully live like today or whether we're pre-recorded. We've always got folks standing by to answer your questions. And if you're watching on replay, give us those comments and questions in the comment section. We'll get back to you just as soon as we can. I had someone today uh, leave a comment slash question on one of our videos and I got it answered. It was a good way to start my day. So I'd encourage you to reach out uh, through that mechanism if you choose. Okay, the Horner training schedule's on the screen. We've got advanced courses, we have basic courses. We probably have some other courses we'll be offering as well later in the year, but this is what's scheduled for now, so don't miss the opportunity to come to the factory for one of these training sessions. There's lots of ways to interact with Horner Automation, either online through our website or our YouTube channel. We're very active on LinkedIn. We'd love to make contact with you and respond to any of your requirements online. Okay, now we had to cancel or at least postpone a live stream a couple weeks ago. That couldn't be helped. However, we are getting that rescheduled and we will be covering that next week. So that topic was customer requested. It was tank volume calculation function blocks. We're gonna be covering that next week, again, for a session that originally was scheduled for May 14th. So as you can see from the date on next week's video, it's June already, or at least it's almost June. And for me, that means summer. And this summer is going to be the summer of Seascape 10. So hint, hint, Seascape 10 is just around the corner and you're gonna find in June and July and probably leaking into August, you're gonna find lots of content related to Seascape 10. So we'll release specific topics related to Seascape 10 and announce those through our normal process. 
However, you can count on lots of videos regarding Seascape 10 in June and July and probably into August. Okay, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, don't hesitate to do so. It doesn't cost anything. And if you choose notifications when you subscribe, you'll be notified every time we go live or every time we post a new video. Now, of course, you'll be notified if YouTube's mechanism works, but hey, I wouldn't count on that necessarily. However, just tune in every Tuesday at two o'clock and then you won't need to worry about it. Okay, so until next week, let's all get out there and enjoy some sun and let's do us some good.